Hey there, Droya here, and welcome to this tutorial where I shall be showing you how to download and set up TFDI Design Passenger and Crew Experience, or PAX, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, as the name suggests, PAX is an add-on that introduces a level of passenger and cabin crew simulation to your flights, and I guess gives you a goal for your flights as well. So, it gives you passengers on board, it gives you end-of-flight reports, it allows you to communicate with your passengers, and they'll then respond to what you say, and ultimately, it just adds a level of complexity to your platform that I do quite like. You have passengers on body aircraft, and it's your job as the pilot to fly them from A to B safely and efficiently, while keeping satisfaction high throughout the aircraft as well. And so the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to set it up, how to run it in your simulator, and how to set up your first flight as well. Once you have purchased the add-on, you are now ready to download and install it. So, once you do, head over to your Manage Products page, and here you can view your order number, your activation key, and your downloads. And so here, you get a choice of either the beta installer, or the live installer. And so, for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be using the standard non-beta installer, and both installers are pretty much the exact same process, just slightly different end products, one being the beta, one being the standard. But, as I say, for this purpose, we shall be using the standard version for installation. So, click on download, and save the installer, to your local hard drive. As well as this, you also require FSUI PC7 from the SimFlight Network forums. So at this stage, it's a freeware download, but don't be alarmed if it does go payware in the future, as with previous versions of FSUI PC, they normally run a freeware version alongside the payware, and therefore people who just use the ads that require it can enjoy them still without the extra nitty gritty bits that are used by some specific add-ons. So, for now it's a freeware download, but don't be alarmed if the payware version and the store page does go up, as usually a freeware version does get released alongside it. So you can use either one of the two links, click on that, and then as you did before, save the file to your local hard drive. With PAX and FSUI PC downloaded, you're now ready to start the installation process. First of all, we'll do FSUI PC7, since this is rather simple, all you have to do is highlight the files, drag them to anywhere in your computer, and it's done. There's no installation process, you drag and drop it anywhere, nice and simple. Now, we'll run the PAX installer. So, open that, select the file location for it to install into, so in my case I'm going to stick it into the D drive, D program TFD Design PAX, and this does not require to be run in the Microsoft Sites and folder. So normally you install it to the community and the official folder, but PAX is a separate third party program and therefore does not require any connection to Simulator whatsoever. So install it wherever you see fit, agree to the license terms and conditions, and click on next. Plug in the serial key, which can be found on the TFDI Design website, and click on install. It may require some third-party stuff to run properly, for example, DirectX, so if you get that, accept the agreements, do not install the Bing bar, remember, always check your installers. So don't install the Bing bar, and we'll now then check your system to see if you're running DirectX, and if you are, it will then skip this process. If you don't have DirectX, it will then install it. So in our case, you can see it's the time that it's already seen an equivalent or newer version installed, and therefore no installation is necessary. And at that point, PAX is then free to install the rest of its program on its own. And with that, you can now click on Run. It will run through the first time set up, and therefore it allows you to activate it to your network via the firewall, which in this case allows you to upload your end of flight plan reports to the online service to share. Go through your online setup, so we're not running x 10. If you have got x 11, you can select that. If not, click on No. And just like that, your first time set is complete, and you're now ready to launch the simulator. When it comes to custom boarding music and safety demos, YouTube is your number one help for this. And so, what you want to do is search for the safety demos or boarding music for any of your favourite airlines, in this case we'll search British Airways, and what you want to do is scroll down through the options it gives you, and select the one you're looking for. 
So in this case, we'll use the British Airways safety demo, as we see here. Just double check, make sure it's the correct one. In this case, this is the BA safety demos from the mid 2000s to the early to late 2010s. And so I'm happy with that. What you want to do is get the URL for it, copy that, and paste it into any YouTube to WAV converter. So PAX requires you to use a WAV sound format file and not an MP3. Remember that it's .wav, not .mp3. Paste your link and click on start, in case I'm using the Ontiva converter. Head to audio and then download the WAV version. The captain and the crew are here for your safety. It Give it a few seconds to convert, click on and save, and just like that, it will now download to your First, local your drive. With the file downloaded, we then want to rename this to your airline of choice, in this case British Airways. And then, navigate to your PC Documents Packs folder. In there, you'll find boarding music and custom safety demos. So in this case, this is a custom safety demonstration. What you want to do is just drag and drop that into the file and add it to your list. And just like that, you now have your safe demo ready to run within PAX. As standard, PAX does not include the A320neo, but adding that to your list is not too difficult and it requires about two steps. So what you want to do is head over to your PAX installation folder, which can be done by right-clicking the executable and going to open file location. And so in my case, it's D drive, program files, TFDI design and PAX. What you want to do is head over to Assets and open up the airplanes.xml list. So select it, right click, and edit. We then want to highlight the A320 in this list. Copy that. Paste it in a new line. Stick Neo at the end of it. And change the seating capacity to 194. So the A320 Neo of the Space Flex interior has an exit capability of 194 passengers and therefore that's the maximum capacity that the aircraft can hold. Save that, you can close both, and now the 320 has been added to your list of selectable aircraft. Once you've loaded up your simulator and you're ready to start your flights, the first thing you want to do is launch FSUI PC. And so if you don't launch FSUI PC first, PAX has no idea that the simulator is running and also has no information to pull from it. So run FSUI PC, we'll show the splash screen on the screen, and then disappear. As what that has done is it's now minimised to your taskbar, and while it does have a visual element, so you can change some options around if you really wanted to, there's nothing that needs to be done, you launch program, it's there, it's done. Once FSUI PC is running, you can now open packs. So double click on the launcher, and it will then pop up on screen. And so this is your main hub for PAX, your main hub for the passenger and crew experience simulation, and this is what we shall be using for our flights today. When you launch PAX for the first time, what you want to do is head over to your settings. First thing, you can set up some key bindings for your PAX menu, and so in this case I'll set up a pop-up at Shift F9 and the voice for Shift F10. If we scroll down, we can then select an auto hide this light, and also the vocal voice, except time. So what this does, if you pop open the menu and click away, after the time you set, it'll disappear. And so because we set F9 to make it appear and disappear, we can then use that to make the menu appear and, well, disappear. So two things to that. The vocal auto accept time is when you say a message using your own voice into PAX, it gives you three seconds to make an adjustment before it plays the message. You can delay it for a few seconds more, or you can disable it entirely. What we can then do is set up a SimBrief username. So if you fly with SimBrief and set up a flight plan using that, PAX will automatically fill in your flight plan based on what SimBrief says. So in this case, I'll just stick in my username Droya and set up all from there. Next, set up the audio sounds and files. So Set up the device you're using for your audio, in my case I'm using the USB PMP sound device. This will depend on whatever your headset or speakers are using. And the volume is the volume. So I've set mine to about 30%, which mixes well with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So. But if you want full volume, set full volume. If you want to mute it, for some reason you can mute it. But for me personally, 30 is probably the sweet spot. 
Also, you can either turn on or off the meter solar view, so... What this does is if you're inside the cockpit, and the flight attendant is speaking, if you go to the external view of the aeroplane, you can mute it, and therefore you can only hear it from inside the aeroplane, if you're outside, it silences it. And so, for me personally, I have to turn that on. You can set up some instants as well, so depending on how passengers are reacting, so there's like emergencies, you can set up different diversions, medical issues, fights, all that kind of stuff, and that can be set via the incident frequency, in that case I use realistic. Now a few more options, so you can display a message inside the simulator, so that's a pop-up, which explains to you what the cabin crew are doing. The playback voice public address, so if you speak to passengers, will then play back your voice with a pilot filter effects, and also the ambience boarding and deboarding sounds. So when passengers boarding and deboarding the aircraft, it plays the sound of like overhead lockers being opened and shut, it plays the footsteps of passengers and the cabin crew greeting, all that kind of stuff. You can then set up different boarding and deboarding times, so how long it takes passengers to board the aircraft and leave when you've landed. And the seatbelt assistance, which I've set to partial, and so this does is it gives you control of the seatbelts uh, within the aircraft, but if for some reason you forget, the cabin crew can then control it for you automatically. And so, see about assistance, you have different levels of that. Next, come to the advanced stuff, so export data text files and the export data path. So, if you want to save your flight plans and all your technical data into a certain file, then you can do that through here. And at the bottom, you have your Discord rich presence, which shows in Discord your flights. And then your network port, if you're for some reason using PAX VRMA different computer, you can use that and connect to the uh, simulator. So with all that explained, what we can now do is click on Menu and Start a Flight. PAX does feature a career mode, and so if you want to create a career, you can do by creating a new career. So you get the pilot name, your airline name, your airline code, and all the factors here as well. Or if you want to skip that, you can go straight to Next. And here, you're plugging your flight information, so we're flying from Vienna to Thessaloniki, so we're flying from Lima, Oscar, Whiskey, Whiskey to Lima, Golf, Alpha, Tango. Our flight number today is Whiskey 62839er, so if we're using call sign, it'll be Whiskey Zulu Zulu, but as we're using the airline's code, we'll use Whiskey 6. Our cruising today is 33,000. Our flight time is 1 hour and 40 minutes, we're departing in 25 minutes, and our aircraft type is the Airbus A320neo that we set up in the menu earlier. It also covers both the 787-10 and the 747-8, but the Neo is one that you need to add manually for the simulator itself. Passenger count, how many people are on board your aircraft, click on next. Now, depending on the different features of your aircraft, this will come into account on your passenger satisfaction and other small factors during flights as well. So if your aircraft has Wi-Fi, you can turn it on or off. If you've got seatback entertainment, you can turn it on or off. If you have boarding music, if you download that online or use one of the two default ones, ambient or motivational, then you can play that as well. In this case, we don't have boarding music and therefore we won't use it. Safety briefing, so before if you download it from YouTube, you can then select it. In this case, we have got always a safety demo. We can then serve a snack service, that's your trolley service that you pay for your meals. And then the meal service, which is the trolley service, but the meals are free. They're complimentary for the uh, passengers on board. So in this case, we don't have that. And so each flight is going to be different. Each flight is set up exactly how you have it, either based on your real world service or your career mode service. And once you're happy, you click on start. You can now hear the passengers in the back of the aeroplane boarding the aircraft. And so, using the menu, we can either have the cabin crew interact with the passengers, or we can speak to them ourselves. So, let's say a message, shall we? Good afternoon, gentlemen, and welcome aboard this weather air flight 2893 from Vienna to Thessaloniki. We are in the final stage of preparing the aircraft for departure, and so we ask you to head to your seat to sit down. Any questions for the cabin crew today? Otherwise, we hope you sit back, relax, enjoy flights today with was there. And so recording the message, we can click on modify if we need to change it, so that's the three second countdown there. And so you can text type a message, though it's successfully times that we're doing a public address to the passengers, a general message. And so depending on what you say, the program will kind of make a guess on what you're trying to say. So if you speak to the cabin crew, then it will know that this is a 
flight attendant requests. If you're talking about say delays to the aircraft and they're doing a delay, so forth and so forth. And then type a message, it'll say it'll be a general message, a humorous one, or point of interest. So if you're flying over a say like the Alps, you can announce you're flying over the Alps and it will then allow passengers to just that. Once you're happy, click on OK. Good afternoon gentlemen and welcome aboard this weather flights 2893 from Vienna to Thessaloniki. You're in the final stage of preparing the aircraft for departure, and so we ask you to head to your seat and sit down. Any questions for cabin crew today? Otherwise, we hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy flights today with was there. And so, what we'll then do is we'll play back here audio for and Paul with a fancy pilot filter voice, and it will do all of that within the sim. So passengers will react to your messages. You can see currently boarding, departing about 20 minutes with a 98% satisfaction on board right now. Within the menu, you can see all the passengers, all their stats, and all their information as well. And with it, it just gives every passenger personality, every passenger a profile. And it's your job as the pilot to keep the flight attendants happy, to then keep the passengers happy. Don't forget also to ask passengers to put their seatbelt signs on. One of the things you can then do while the aircraft is also in the boarding process as well. And so with that... That's your introduction to PAX. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful in learning how to set up PAX and use it when you simulate it to start. And so, at some point I might do a video on all the stages. So, PAX for your departure, PAX for your pushback to your runway to your cruise and landing. But for now, it's a basic tutorial on how to set up, install it to your simulator up, and run it all directly through that. And so, if you found it helpful, then please do consider leaving a like. Do also subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope to see you again in the very near future. Take care and have a good one.